A polyprotic acid is a compound that can donate more than one proton. Examples are carbonic acid, H2CO3, and phosphoric acid, H3PO4. The word polyprotic gives us a hint to the meaning here, poly meaning many, and protic meaning protons, so polyprotic acids contain more than one proton that can be lost. Now, it's important to appreciate how protons are lost from a polyprotic acid. They're not lost en masse. They're not lost simultaneously or in one fell swoop. They're lost in a succession of different deprotonation steps with different equilibrium constants. For a general acid, for example, uh, H3A, let's take a triprotic acid, for example, there is a Ka value associated with the first deprotonation. Let me throw water here as the other reactant. There is a Ka value associated with this first deprotonation by water to form the first conjugate base, H2A minus and H3O plus. We call that Ka1. There is another Ka value that's completely distinct for deprotonation of that conjugate base a second time. This is an entirely different process, and it has its own K value, which we call Ka2, where the 2 signifies that this is the second deprotonation. So we end up with the conjugate of the original conjugate base, or what we might call the second conjugate here, which now has a charge of 2 minus. There is also a Ka3 associated with a third deprotonation that forms A3 minus, but I won't write it here. The reason we need to consider the deprotonation steps separately is that these K values vary significantly. In particular, for a polyprotic acid, the successive Ka's decrease significantly. So in general, Ka1 is the largest, and it's going to be much greater than Ka2, much greater than Ka3, etc. Essentially, this is how we define Ka1, Ka2, and Ka3. The 1, the 2, and the 3 refer to the first deprotonation, which, if we're thinking of the first deprotonation as the easiest or most favored deprotonation, of course it's going to have the largest K value, right? And 2 and 3 from there are going to have smaller K values. For an example of this, let's consider the deprotonation of phosphoric acid. So the first deprotonation, water removes a proton from H3PO4 to give us H2PO4- minus and H3O+. Plus. This is the first deprotonation, and Ka1 here is 7.5 times 10 to the negative 3. The next deprotonation involves that conjugate base of the first deprotonation. In other words, the product of the first deprotonation over here reacting with water. This is, again, an equilibrium process, and we're going to end up with the conjugate base of the acid on the left-hand side of this equation and H3O plus again. The Ka value here, Ka2, is actually much, much smaller than Ka1. It turns out to be 6.2 times 10 to the negative eighth. So we've gone from 10 to the negative third power to 10 to the negative eighth power. Quite a big difference there. And then finally, we have that conjugate base, the product of that process, HPO42 minus, reacting with water to form the ultimate conjugate base here, PO4, 3 minus, and H3O plus. And the Ka value here, Ka3, is much smaller even than Ka2. It's 4.8 times 10 to the negative 13. So with each jump from Ka1 to Ka2 to Ka3, we're decreasing the Ka value by about a factor of 10 to the negative 5. One question we want to address is why is this happening? Why does the Ka value decrease with each successive deprotonation? And the answer lies in electrostatic effects and Coulomb's law. The bottom line is that molecules don't want to hold a huge amount of charge. Neutral molecules are generally more stable than charged molecules. So as we pile more charge on to the conjugate base, negative charge in this case, that deprotonation becomes more unfavorable. So hold, holding a negative charge, H2PO4 minus may be happy to do that. Two minus charge, not quite so fun. And the three minus charge, that molecule is very unhappy because of the large concentration of negative charge on that anion. Relative certainly to HPO4 two minus and H2PO4, which are 
essentially the same as PO43 minus, just with the addition of one or two protons, right? So in a relative sense, PO43 minus is much less stable than HPO42 minus and H2PO4, which leads directly to this very small Ka value over here for Ka3. This is an unfavorable process because of the large concentration of charge right here. This slide, which I'll show very briefly, just lists some examples of dissociation constants for polyprotic acids, and you should notice that in each case, Ka decreases substantially in going from Ka1 to Ka2. This decrease turns out to be very convenient when we start thinking about calculating the pH of a polyprotic acid. Rigorously, we should calculate the H3O plus concentration using all of the acid dissociation equilibria. That means we need to consider the Ka1 equilibrium and then take that concentration of conjugate base after we've considered Ka1 and look at Ka2's equilibrium and so on and so far forth down the line. But if Ka1 is much, much greater than Ka2 and so on and so forth, then whatever concentration of conjugate base is produced due to the Ka1 equilibrium probably isn't going to dissociate much further because Ka2 is much, much smaller, right? So what we can do in the majority of cases is actually calculate the hydronium concentration and the pH based only on the first deprotonation. This means we only need to do one ice table, which is great, and it just keeps our lives simpler in general because we only need to worry about the neutral acid species, and that first conjugate base. We don't need to worry about any further conjugates. There is one important exception to this idea, and it's H2SO4. H2SO4's Ka2 is large enough that we do actually need to consider it. So if we back up to this table, sulfuric acid is a strong acid, so its Ka1 is very large. It's in excess of one. The products are favored in this acid dissociation of sulfuric acid, but even Ka2 is fairly large, right? This is between 2 and 3 in the pKa scale, and so that's, that's getting down into dangerously close to strong acid territory, so it's important to consider Ka1 and Ka2. We can treat Ka1 like sulfuric acid is a strong acid, but if we want to be really careful and accurately calculate the pH, we need to do a weak acid type calculation for the second Ka of sulfuric acid, starting as if it's all dissociated from H2SO4 to HSO4 minus, and then doing an ice table and an equilibrium problem with this second Ka.